Hi there, mates. Now, can ChatGPT put together a comprehensive Tesla Model Y beginner's guide questionnaire? Well, that's what we're going to see in this video. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is National Tesla Nagal. Let's do this. So it all started like this. My good mate Amjad, whom you're going to see in this video, he recently bought a Tesla Model Y rear wheel drive and he had a ton of questions because he's a brand new EV user. So he has not had any exposure to EVs. In fact, he was super surprised that the entire delivery process was only five minutes. They just went in, they asked them to authenticate on the phone, they gave them the car and they said, take the left and head the highway. That's it. So he's here in Wollongong and he had a ton of questions. So we thought we'll put together a questionnaire for all Tesla Model Y and an extension new Tesla Model 3 owners and what questions they may have if they are new to EVs per se. And we thought it would be even more interesting if we asked ChatGPT to put that questionnaire for us. And these are the questions that we asked and these are the questions that ChatGPT gave us. Let's see these. Right here, the first question we asked was, beginners user questions for a new Tesla Model Y user. It does not have to be grammatical, as you know in ChatGPT, it will give you a host of answers and these are the questions that it gave you. And the next question that we asked was, set up guide questions for new Tesla Model Y owners and how to set up your car, that's the next question we asked. And the third question we asked was, advanced setup for my Tesla Model Y. So and then it gave us a host of questions. Now do check the description as well as the link below for the questions so you can skip ahead to the questions that you want answered but always watch till the end of this video because in the very end we're going to do a comparison so a new owner Amjad my good mate he's going to ask extra questions and we're going to see and rate if ChatGPT answered all his questions or if ChatGPT had the right questions that he want answered so let's do this Okay, Nash, I have a few questions to ask about this uh, Model Y car. Okay. Um, if you can help me, that would be really helpful. Sure. Okay. How do I pair my smartphone with the Model Y's Bluetooth system? Okay, the easiest way to do is to use the app browser. So these three dots that you see here at the very bottom. Yep. So that is the app browser. When you go into the app browser, you have a whole host of, of apps that you can use. And in this, you can see Bluetooth is there as well. So if you hit on Bluetooth, and you can, you've already done the connection for one of your phones. Let's say we want to connect another phone. So let's let's use uh, my phone as an example. Um, I'm going to have Bluetooth on in my phone. It'll say connect. And then we can say add new device. And it's looking for any uh, discoverable devices in this region. Okay. So we can, we can do the start search. And it'll probably see my phone in just a bit. So that's my Pixel 7a that's seen here. It's coming here. So let, let me hit on that Pixel 7a. And it'll give me a code there. So I have to make sure that this code is the same as that code. So okay. 303746. Yep. And, and I can also say allow access to my contacts and call history. I can click on that on my phone. So you can see it here as well. And then you hit on pair and that will pair my phone to that. Is it that simple? That's good. That's super simple. And if you want to forget the device, same drill. You hit on the forget device and then uh, it will go away. You can do one more thing as well. You have done it too on your phone. So you can hit on the star. So I can make this as the priority device. So the car will first try to connect to this priority device before others when using this particular profile. So this device will be paired to your profile and uh, you can make that as a priority, priority device. You've actually done that. You've hit on priority device, you hit on sync contacts and you can actually sync messages as well. So the messages will come up too and we will, we will see that uh, too if you want to. And then we can get the messages coming here and uh, you can take, uh, you can reply to the messages too. Okay, so can we use the voice messages to reply you? Yes, you can use uh, voice control, voice, voice control. commands to, yeah. to reply to your messages also. So all of your voice commands are through this right scroll wheel. So the right side scroll wheel or your press it in. So it is a five way scroll wheel and it will now try to recognize what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's it's not that great in recognizing all of the things, but it is it, it is quite contextual. Let's do this again or you can even tap tap on this button now. Play songs by Justin Bieber and it'll start playing the songs but we don't want to play we don't want to get into a content strike so I won't play that sure now the next question okay what are the steps to create a Tesla account and link into my model Y okay to create a Tesla account you need to download the Tesla app so let's do this from the beginning so Tesla app you click on that and you have a 
uh, account page here. You can do this from the web as well, but much easier doing from the phone. You click on create account and then it will open up inside of Chrome or inside of the browser or inside of the app as well. And then you can create your name, you can create uh, your password and that will create the account. It's as simple as that. In my case, I have already have an account. So let me just sign into the account and I'll show you how this works. So you can also activate two part uh, authentication as well. And in this case, I have my Tesla and the Gong account. Uh, click next. My password is here. If you have the password saved, obviously it will come in and it will have a two factor authentication there. And once I hit the two factor authentication, my uh, my uh, app will come into view and whatever car that I've ordered can come inside here as well. So you can track your order as well. Okay. You can track your order too from uh, from inside the app. How do I connect my Model Y to my home Wi-Fi network? If in case if I have to download some new software, that's a great a question. Way to do that? Yes, there is. A, yeah, there is a way to do this. So let's let's create. In this case, because we're standing outside, and I'll create a hotspot here, and I'll uh, have the hotspot uh, turned on there. Okay, how to connect to Wi-Fi? It's quite simple. You hit on the car icon folder and if you hit on this LTE which is the connection button if you hit on that you will see it's searching for Wi-Fi and it's already found the Wi-Fi of my phone because I've, I'm sharing my Wi-Fi to, to over here this is TITG is my Wi-Fi uh, username and then I can hit on the password so let's let's click on that password of mine so it says connecting and now it's connected so you get that uh, check mark in green it says Wi-Fi connected in fact, now with Wi-Fi connected, you can actually download a software there as well. A software update has come for your car. And that is the symbol for software update, that uh, yellow color download button. Okay, the next question for you is, uh, what are the options for customizing the Model Y's interior settings, such as seat positions and driver profile? Great. First and foremost, well, let's look at driver profile. Uh, we'll, we'll bring this down. If you hit on that name that you've already created, you can create more driver profiles. You can say driver profile settings. You can click on that. And now you can add a new driver profile. Uh, in this case, that is your uh, uh, drive, driver profile that you have set up. Let's click on new profile and let's create one for myself. Let's say Nash and I can click on create profile. And now you can create a few things with this. The first and foremost, what you can do is you can set the steering wheel height depending on how much you want. So let's do that. Let's do steering wheel height. And you can see that the left side scroll wheel has an up, down, in and out. And that will do the, the scrolling for your uh, steering wheel. So let's scroll up from here. So when you scroll up, it goes all the way to the top. When you scroll down, it goes down there. So you can go as low as you want or as high as you want, depending on your, your height. Now let's say we want to go in and out. So you want the steering wheel to come in and out. You can use the scroll there and you can do the scroll here as well. Let's very quickly um, see that too one more time so that uh, it's easy for people to, to look at it. So if you want the steering to go in and out, out like so, you're going to push this way. And if you want to go in, you press in like so, it goes in. If you want to go up or down, you can scroll down for it to go down. And you can scroll up to go up. Now you'll notice that every time I stop doing this, I can now click on save. So once I hit on save, it will save it to my profile. So this is the profile height that I want. So is that mean all the profiles are going to be saved there? So as soon as you get into the car, it's going to be adjusted according to yes, the, this, who's the driver, right? It will yeah. it'll adjust according to who the driver is. Yeah. Now let me hit on Nash again, and I'm going to Nash again, and that will that will choose my profile. Now if it wants to be your profile, you can see that change there. In my case, if I go here, it'll change there as well. Now, we can also do the uh, side view mirrors with this. So hit on this, and you want to, you want to do the side view mirror uh, setting up. So you can do mirror setting up with this. So hit on mirror, and you can use the same scroll wheel for doing the left mirror and then the right mirror. Let's do that, okay? So let's let's look at the left side mirror now. So yeah, if you, if you scroll, so now you're using the left right arrow and you can change that. And depending on how you want it to be set up, you can do that. And now up down as well, you can go up, you can go up, you scroll up, just keep scrolling up. There we go. Now if you scroll down, 
there it is so this is how you do the steering and the uh, mirrors once you hit the mirrors you can now hit on save and it will go and save into my profile so now when i get in this is how the mirrors and the steering wheel will be set up now we can do your uh, seat position height as well so let's do the seat position height now so as you can see here is the seat position controls you can see that there is a front and back so this will bring the seat to the front and you can just press back like that to go back and if you want to adjust the incline too you can adjust the incline like so the incline goes back like that so you use this tab to go incline up and you use this tab to go incline forward so that is the way you do the incline up and down and again you can it'll automatically store on your profile as soon as you do the incline it automatically store and you can do that too so this one is for your um, uh, height up and height down. Okay, right. Let me try this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you can feel that that the, the seat heights are going up and down. So that other tab, the third tab at the back, this one is for height up and height down adjustment. So you can go up and it'll height up a little bit. Can you feel that as? Yes, I can. Yeah. And then that will automatically store in your profile. Your, your lumbar support has been removed. So that is not there anymore, but you can also do uh, you can also do all these five-way adjustments. So this is front, back, rear, and forward, and then you can do some height adjustments for the seats to go up and down. And do we have the same controls for the passenger as well? Great question. Let's go to the passenger side and show you. So on the passenger side, as you can see, it has the uh, front, back, and the inclination buttons, but it doesn't have that that other lumbar support and height adjustment button for the seats. So it'll only do forward rear for the tilt and then you can go back and go forward and that's all you can do on the passenger side so can you show me how do i set up model y the touch play screen here okay the touch display is our most important screen because we don't have a second screen everything happens in this in this uh, gorgeous gorgeous screen it is super responsive and really high resolution um, but we have to understand that uh, there are lots and lots of things happening in this so first and foremost, let's look at the, um, uh, the the screen itself. So this is the first screen that you see when you get into the car. You can now control your trunk and the trunk as well. In our case, the trunk uh, is a automated trunk. So you can open. The animation shows you the opening of the trunk. You can close the trunk from here. You can lock the car from here. You can unlock the car from here. You can also lock the car and unlock the car from here also. There's a second button there. It does the same thing. You can open the frunk as well. Of course, our frunk is not automated, so you have to go out to close it, so I'm not doing that. It also shows you animation as well. So if you're opening the door, so you can see the door animation will be there as soon as you open. This is the passenger side door I'm opening. So it shows exactly which door is open now. Yeah, okay. so if you try and open your front uh, passenger, sorry, driver door, yeah, it'll open the driver door and show you there, and it'll show you that too. So this is this is the main control as, as soon as you get into the car before you start driving. There are a few other things that are inside this and you must know that too. Let's look at this side of the screen now. This side of the screen you have the navigation bar and, and you can now click on this and say where you want to go and then that will take you there too. Uh, and there are a few other things too. So this is the time control uh, and if you click on that it will also give you your Tesla app. Uh, you can also change your, you can go into calls, you can see your contacts, your favorites, your messages. The whole works will come here when you click on that. And here you can do the driver profile as well. And it will also tell you how many minutes ago it's, it uh, synced. So this is 48 minutes ago. It synced with all your uh, data. Now, there are a few things that uh, you have to know here. One more thing is uh, this is the um, place that we are in. We can now change the view from this and you can change it uh, to uh, south facing. So this is, this is with the um, compass on. And then you can change that back to just north facing if you, if you like that. So each people... Uh, have a different kind of a way to do it yeah and that is super responsive so we are in the gorgeous gorgeous Kayama uh, near the Kayama blowhole and you can now go in and it actually is super responsive you can go all the way out and see where you are and go back here as well and even when you're navigating you can click on that and and uh, even dictate what you want to navigate to or where you want to navigate to from here you can have say favorites but my interesting thing is you can do favorites, you can have charging, hungry, lucky. Let's look at charging. Everybody likes to know where charging points are. So when you click on charging, you'll see that there are uh, multiple charge points that come up. 
So these are the charging stations in and around us. And there are different colors to indicate what these chargers are. If they are gray in color, these are the high power wall chargers or the non superchargers or non DC fast chargers. So non DC fast chargers, which are Tesla DC, uh, non DC fast chargers will come here. The DC fast chargers will come here. So we have the Wollongong charger in Fig Tree and we have the Berry charger, uh, which is there. And it will tell you how many bays are there, six bays. And both, this, uh, both the superchargers have all six bays, which are free. And you will know that this is a 250 kilowatt max supercharger, which is a V3 supercharger. This is a V2 supercharger with 130 kilowatts max. And you will also know the rates as well. Now, recently, Tesla brought up something uh, very interesting with this particular map. It will tell you a little bit of rating about that place. So let's go into Haven at Berry. You just click on this button and it will give you uh, what is there. So the destination charger, it has one connector, 22 kilowatts max. This is AC charger. It's available only for customers. So are they asking us to call ahead and you can have you can call ahead and also find other amenities around it. You can go into their map as well and it will open the browser. <laughs> it will give you wow. Haven at Berry and you can actually see about this before you go. So it has an inbuilt browser as well. It has an inbuilt browser too. So this is this I thought was a great time to show you the inbuilt browser. And if this is some place that you come very often, you can go click on favorite and that will favorite that spot. You can you can name it. You can have the, this one and add to your favorites. And when you add to your favorites, it will come inside of your favorites button. Now let's look at the Berry Supercharger, one of my most uh, favorite one. And I'm going to give a quick link to my own video too. I recently did a great uh, Tesla uh, owners club meetup at Berry and I have another video please check the description for that and you can see that so it'll tell you what is the peak hours of charging there you see around the 3 p.m. is where it gets most busy so if you are going towards uh, towards the charger at 3 p.m. you um, you need to be a little aware of that now the cool part is if you're going to a supercharger you can actually click on navigate as soon as you hit on navigate it'll say calculating route to the supercharger and it will also start doing something called battery preconditioning. So as you start driving, the batteries will start get preconditioning, uh, preconditioned so it will become warmer. So when you go there, the, the battery and the car is ready to accept all of the energy from these superchargers uh, by the time you get there. So as you start driving, you'll see a small little no, uh, I didn't message. get that. Why do we have to precondition the battery? Because if it's a cold battery, it will be much slower to charge, the easy way to put it. That's not the right explanation, but the easy, uh, common way of explaining explaining is if the battery is a cold battery, it does not take charge as fast as it can. So it is not a great way to go without preconditioning your battery, particularly to a DC charger. For an AC charger, there's no problem because the cycles are, are smaller or cycles are lower, whereas in a DC charger, it's great to go uh, with preconditioned. And unfortunately, a non-Tesla DC fast charger will not be preconditioned. Your battery won't be preconditioned if you go to a non-Tesla charger. It's only available for Tesla chargers. So you can end this trip. Let's go back to charging. So there's another way to get to the chargers. So you can hit on this charge button here as well. You can hit on the charge button and that will bring up the chargers. Let's say we're going to go to the Wollongong charger. Hit on that. And when you're going there, it says you'll get there at 60%. And uh, it, it, uh, because you have uh, FSD package, it's also telling navigate and autopilot is active and it will start preconditioning your battery as you start driving. Uh, as you get closer, it will keep your battery warm for you to charge. Let's come to the bottom part now. In the bottom part, you have the volume control here. You can push up the volume, push down the volume. But the cool part is because this is a touchscreen, they have full advantage of the touchscreen's capabilities. You can hold and push for the volume to go up and go down how cool is that and you can push back That's down as well really cool yeah, i didn't is, know that and you can do this like here as well so you can do this too or you can just hit and do all the way there all the way back or you can use a chevron to do this and because this is a touch control you can do that for the temperature as well you can use a chevron go up go down or just hit and slide and now That's handy yeah this is super handy isn't it now, this is not in split view. So these are two separate um, uh, controls there for the driver and passenger. If you want to split it, you can actually split it too. So you can hit on split. Now the, the passenger will have a different control. The temperature won't change there. You see, this is going down to 19 degrees. You're still saying at 22 degrees. And that is how this is. 
So this is for the bottom half. And there is more you can go and do with temperature, but I'll show you other things as well. So this one is your commonly used apps. And this is the app drawer button that we saw previously. You'll hit on the app drawer and you can have all these things that you can bring it down here. So let's say you want to see the energy graphs all the time. You can bring it down and leave it in my app section. So you can see there are two splits here. Recently used apps and my apps. You can you you can use whatever you want to keep here. So um, let's say we want to have the energy. Now let's say you don't want the energy. Hit on that. That will go away. And uh, maybe you want to uh, have uh, defrost coming there. So you can keep that as a, as the uh, most used app there. You can and in your case you've kept the phone. If you don't want the phone, take it off. And let's say you are somebody who loves karaoke which is you can sing along in your car you can actually keep that so lyrics will come up and you can actually sing with the car you can keep that these are all fun things or if you're an apple mu music user you can bring that there too uh, and leave it there and use that uh, more often so you can have i believe uh, three apps here or is it four i think it's yeah you can have four apps there no more sorry so you can have uh, more more apps there, and your recent apps will go smaller. And so it looks like it, maximum you can have up to five apps. One, two, up yeah, it's just apps. five apps, yep. and then you can it'll keep going away. If you want a Zoom call as well, you can have Zoom calls in your car, and I'll oh, show you okay, that. Safe. Now this is the last and most important button, and this is your lifesaver button, and that's why it's closest to the driver. In a in a left hand drive car, it'll be switched around. So this button is your settings menu, and I wanted to go to this last because we can make this as a separate section in the video too. So this has multiple sub menus in it and these sub menus are how you control your entire car. And the first one it says controls. This is like a quick cheat menu where you can do a lot of things. First row is for the headlamps. You can leave it at auto so it will have your daytime lights when it's daytime and you can change that and put it into off as well. You can do a manual control too. I usually leave it at auto. I can just leave it there. The second one is you can control your glove box and I'll show you the glove box control now. That is actually very cool. So hit on that glove box button and you keep watching. It'll open your glove box there. That is super cool, isn't it? You can't close it. it. So you don't have to manually open it, right? No, okay. but you have to manually close it though. Right. But you can uh, do this. I'm going to show you one more thing in the glove box. So you can click on glove box. So yeah. right there, you can see that there's a USB stick there. And that is where your dash cam footage is are getting stored. So you're probably going to ask me, what is this dash cam feature? So you can see there is a control here which says sentry mode and recording. So you can actually record from all your uh, your cameras here. And let's, how many cameras are there in Tesla? Why? That's a great, great question. So let's look at the dash cam feature. So let's go into the app drawer. Let's click on dash cam. So when you click on dash cam, you will see that these are the footages that the dash cam has recorded at uh, 9.11. So right now it's 9.30 a.m. At 9.11 a.m., these are the cameras that has been recording. And the cool part is in real time, in real time, you can play this. Yeah, you can play that footage and you can change from the front camera to the rear camera, from the rear camera to the right camera, from the right to the left camera as well. So this is the dash cam footages that get stored. And now you asked me that question, what is sentry mode? Now, these are the cameras that are there in the car. And these cameras are always present in the car. It's, it's, it's an electric car. You don't need to turn on the engine. The car can turn on by, by, by just the, using the electric energy. So these cameras can be used to protect your car as well, or at least to give you alerts if something is happening around your car. And this is called sentry mode. And we actually asked for this feature from Elon and Elon has, has activated this feature. It's been there in our cars for a couple of years now. If you go into your, into your uh, Tesla app and I'll show you the cool stuff that's happening there. So let's go into um, your Tesla app and you've got a actually awesome name. Happy Breeze is a great name. So you can see that there is a live camera enabled because you enabled uh, sentry mode right. and you enabled sentry mode from here. You actually enable, you can disable sentry mode here and that live camera will go away. If you enable sentry mode, it will bring up the live camera app option. So when the live camera app option is taken uh, and it's enabled, we can actually step out and I'll show you how this works. Let's step out of the car now. So there we go. We can see that uh, that is the 
uh, front camera, you can click on the right camera. So we are standing right next oh, to that. Okay. And it's a live camera, right? It's a live camera. See, there's a slight lag. You can see there's a very, very minor lag. And you can go and look at the other camera on the other side, the rear camera. And the beauty of it is you can actually activate the internal camera too. So you can see what is happening inside your so what car. What the cabin camera? The cabin camera. You see, you can, the cabin camera is now activated. And unlike in the uh, Model 3, the Model Y camera, cabin camera is mounted higher up. So the, the view is much, much better there. You can now go to the front camera as well and see the front. So that I'm just wondering, can we use the front camera when you park your car in a parking lot? to okay. have a 360 degree, degree view. Okay, you can't have a true 360 degree view, but you can do this on your on your, on your your uh, screen to to see if anything is happening around it. So let's go into, into drive. Click on drive. So now you, are, you put the rear camera on, it'll turn on the rear camera, and it'll also give you an uh, option to auto park, and I'll be talking about the auto park in just a bit and do a little bit of summon as well. So the rear lines are, are beautifully seen, but the front lines are not that robustly seen. So that is the only drawback. You can't use the front camera to park your car. The rear camera you can definitely use to park your camera, to park your car. Maybe in the future, do you think we can get some updates? We are all asking for that bird's eye view, the 360 degree view from Elon, but he has not uh, given us that yet. And now let's look at how to control uh, the mirrors and the steering wheel too. So that is important to, to, to do as well. So let's say um, we want to uh, set up the, the mirrors. So how to set up the mirrors? You hit on the mirrors button and you can now you choose the either the left or the right mirror and you can set it up and you can use this scroll wheel, the left scroll wheel over here. So you can use this scroll wheel to, to go up and down or go out and in like so, in and out like so to control. Let me show, I'll let you control this. Let's go up, scroll up please. So you can now scroll up and that goes up. If you scroll down, it'll scroll down. If you go in and out, so it will go out like so and in like so as well. So that is super cool. And the beauty is once you're done with that, you can now hit on save to save it. Or if you want to restore to your old setting, just hit on restore and it will just go back to your old setting too. You can also set up your steering wheel with the same, same scroll wheel. So if you set up that and uh, if you scroll up, so if you scroll up, that goes up there. And if you scroll down, that goes down there as well. And now you can do in, out too. So just press in and that pushes the steering wheel in. Now do out and it'll push the steering wheel out. And once you're done with that, you hit on save and that will save it to your profile. So you can save or if you want to just restore, you can hit on restore and it'll just go back to the setting that you had before. So that is amazing. And here you can set your screen brightness. You can make it bright or dark or hit on auto and it will automatically keep this. Now, I think uh, you wanted to know about this folding mirrors a little before. So if you hit on fold mirrors, I'm going to show you how this happens and we'll show you from the driver's side. You hit on the fold mirror and it will automatically fold. But it also gives you an option to save your location. So if you are in a place where there is a tight garage, either at work or at home, you can save that geolocation because everything is geotagged. It will remember that at that particular location, you want the mirrors to be folded, and so it'll automatically fold the mirrors for you when you reach that geolocation. It is that cool. And the next row is for wiper control. Now, for wiper control, you can have automatic wiper control, or you can switch off the wipers, or you can have one, two, three, uh, four levels of settings there. So that is all that is happening in this particular screen, and that's the first important control screen there. And I believe we have the sensors so the wipers can start automatically when it is raining. There is no wiper sensors. This car has uh, AI, so it will rely on the camera to, to detect the uh, raindrops and it will automatically uh, do the uh, speed of wiper based on the raindrops if you have the auto setting turned on. What about the rear wiper? Do we have a rear wiper in Model Y? There's no, there's no rear wipers in, in any of the Teslas. Uh, because the the shape of the car is such that, that the water sort of flows off. That's so there's nice. no way to uh, to stop the uh, the water there. A few other things in the screen. So you can have pedals and steering. So acceleration can be chill mode, which is not an instant acceleration. It will be a cool, slow uh, acceleration. And if you want to go into standard mode, which is what most people keep it as, you can go into standard mode. So it will give you a little bit more oomph in the acceleration. Uh, when when you use the standard mode 
and then you can have the steering mode as well. You can have it in comfort. Uh, whereas in sport, it'll be super tight in comfort. It'll be a nice loose uh, steering uh, configuration. And uh, stopping mode, everybody has it in hold. It gives you a single pedal uh, driving capability. Uh, so as soon as you take your, hand, your foot off the, the pedal, the car will go into a hold automatically. But some people may want to drive it like an ice car. They may want to have the creep feature. So if you take your, your foot off the pedal, the car won't slow down. It'll actually keep creeping forward. It'll, it'll slowly move when the pedals are released and hold when the pedals are released. It'll be a maximum regenerative braking will happen. It'll, it'll bring the car to a halt within a few seconds. Um, uh, that, is, that is really good. And in this case, you can also do slip start. So if it's stuck in snow, sand or mud, you can hit, hit the slip start button before you accelerate so it can get you out of a mud situation that's good that's very handy as well that's good that's super cool okay can you show me the other feature which is charging here on the screen great charging is something that everybody wants to know about so if you go and hit on charging you have some controls there in charging you can actually open the charge port, port from here you click on that and it'll open the charge port and when it opens the charge port it'll actually bring up this menu too so in this menu you can do a few things uh, what you can do is you can set the limit of charging. So you can you can go from 50% or you can go uh, uh, to 100%. And here they say when you go to 50%, it, it gives you a small message. It says, uh, we recommend keeping your charge limit at 100% and charging fully once per week is what they say. So this is good for your particular car. In your car, this is the rear wheel drive model Y, has an LFP battery, an LFP battery, which is okay to charge 100%. Um, if you want to know what LFP is, LFP is lithium iron phosphate battery. There are different battery chemistries. In the rear wheel drive cars, both, both the Y and the 3 have the LFP battery here in Australia. And you can charge 100% almost every day and the battery degradation won't be too bad. But in my case, I have a long range car. Mine is a nick nickel cadmium uh, alloy, uh, is the battery composition. And, and I'm asked to set at 90% and not charge at 100% every day. So I can go and set it down to 90% there and uh, leave it at that and charge only 90%. So I, do not, I should not be charging 100% every day. Uh, so that is something that Tesla is quite aware of. You can also change what amperage of charge you're doing from here too. As a very important feature here, you can do something called scheduled charging. So what you can do is you can click on this and you can say, I want to charge only with off peak, peak rates and I want the car to be preconditioned and ready for me to leave at 7 a.m. every day because I have to go to work. 7 a.m. every day and I hit on set and it will become uh, scheduled uh, to leave at 7 a.m. The battery will be preconditioned. Your car will be preconditioned for the temperature that they have set here and it will be ready for you to go and you can change that and leave it at a different temperature and then hit on schedule again and it will remember that particular temperature and it will remember for your profile and it will keep the car ready. You can go and make it granular. Hit on settings. You can say every day or only weekdays and then you can also set off peak charging. So if, you are, if your energy provider is giving you off-peak rates, you can click on that and you can say, I want uh, my off-peak rates ends at 5 a.m. So I want the car to be charged before 5 a.m. So it will be ready and charged before 5 a.m. It will only use off-peak rates so you don't have to pay too much. So it has a, uh, it has a cool feature there. Uh, so it all depends on your energy provider too. That's good. So that is about the charging uh, over there. And it will also give you how much you paid for your last supercharger. So you've used a supercharger on uh, Friday and you've paid $27 for that supercharging uh, so session. How do you make a payment uh, when you use the supercharger? So it is super easy. It is already linked into your Tesla app. So when you set up a Tesla app, you had that the option of setting up a payment module there on the setter app, Tesla app and it'll get charged to that credit card or debit card that you, you, you set up there. So we don't have to get out of the car and make payment like manually using your um, credit card or debit card not at all all you okay. need to do is go to the supercharger plug in and sit inside and enjoy something on your uh, tesla theater we'll talk about the tesla theater in just a bit and the and the car will charge and be ready for you to leave uh, when the time comes and That's you can good. set how much you want to charge in each session too and now we'll come to the most important thing which is autopilot in your particular case you have fsd beta package in your car so this is the place where you use your uh, FSD beta package. Many people ask this question, is FSD beta available here in Australia? No, it is not. 
It is only available for a few a few cars in the U.S. and in Canada. Rest of the world does not have that. But there are a few things that is right now working with FSD Beta uh, package on this, and that is the traffic light visualization, summon, and then it'll also give you full self-driving preview uh, as well. So that is the few things that are there in our FSD Beta package, and you can also also customize this navigate on autopilot. So everybody asks, what is this navigate on autopilot? Many people ask this question. So you can uh, enable uh, navigate on autopilot for every trip and you can say yes for that. So that navigate on autopilot will be ready for you to use as soon as you use your autopilot setting for navigate on autopilot. So what does navigate on autopilot do? It will follow a car like any other TACC system, traffic aware cruise control system, but it'll also do a few other things. It'll do speed based lane change. So it'll overtake and merge in a highway between cars and you can also do that setting into different things you can you can disable that and say i do not want you to change lanes it'll actually get saved to your profile or i want it to be a mild this one so if there's lots of space between the cars it will overtake the car and merge back onto the left side of the lane uh, after overtaking a slow moving car and it'll do it when there is lots of space average it'll do it a little bit more aggressively or mad max it'll be super aggressive it'll be like a it will be like a uh, robot by, by overtaking and coming back into the lane. And you can say, I want this lane change to be confirmed. It cannot do it by itself. It will tell you there is a lane change available. Do you want me to do it? You have to press on your uh, right stock down to confirm that the lane change happens. You can actually see that. So only when you confirm, it will do the lane change, it will not lane change by itself. So that can be done. And this exit passing lane as well, you can take the exit whenever there is a lane exit to go into to, uh, the uh, main roads from the motorway, you can exit with that. And you can also do lane change notification here. You can chime when there is a lane change happening or you can have vibrate or both if you want to do that as well. So that is something that you can do. If you, if you disable the uh, required confirmation, then you can, it will give you the notification when it's about to change lanes, but it will vibrate and also give you a chime when it's trying to change the lane. So that is the cool part about the navigate on autopilot. And we look at summon in just a bit. And then you can do a few other things as well. You can do uh, the automatic blind spot camera. Uh, so this, what it does is it, it shows the repeater camera when you turn on the uh, indicator. So yeah. try try that. So if you put the car into drive and you put the indicator on. So when you put the left indicator, it's showing you that blind spot. Let's put the right indicator on. It's showing you that blind spot. And you can actually move this around and leave it in other places too. If you want to keep it in a different spot, it'll give you those choices of spots. So you can keep it at top. It'll tell you you can move it here or you can move it there and leave it that way. Okay. <clears throat> so if you want to turn on the indicator now, so if you turn up the indicator again, it'll turn off the indicator. So if, if it does not automatically do it, it'll usually automatically do it once you make the turn. But for instance, if you make the left indicator, put the left indicator on, and it just, you change your mind and you want to go straight, just click on the left indicator again, it'll turn off the indicator. That's really helpful because sometimes when we change the indicator, we just get confused. Yeah. Whether we are going left or right and we have to put left and then try to go to right. And yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. So that is the, that is the cool <laughs> part about that. Now, this is about locks. Now, you can have uh, your phones attached to this or you can also buy a key fob. So, in my case, I have a key fob for my Model 3 and this Model 3 key fob works for Model Y too. And you can pair the key fob from here. You can say add key and it will ask you whether it's a key fob or the card you want to do or the phone and you can pair everything from here and you can pair your key fob too. I have a separate video on how to do the key fob pairing. I'll leave that link in the description of this of this video too so that people can look at that and do uh, the key fob pairing for them it is useful to have this because you can unlock the car lock the car uh, open the trunk open the trunk open the charge ports the whole works and this, these are all buttons each one is a button uh, you can actually use that to control your car and unlock and unlock the car as well so you can you can double tap on this it'll open the trunk if you press and hold it it'll open the charge port and so on and so forth so this is something that you can do from here now you can click on the lights. We saw this. There are more granular controls. We saw only that in the in the main top control. You can go into granular controls here. You can do ambient lighting. You can uh, headlights after exit. So you can have that on. So it, the headlights will be on for a few minutes. And then, then uh, steering uh, wheel uh, lights will be lighting up there inside the steering wheel too for you to use at night. So these are things that you can use there. And you can do the display changes too. You can put auto, 
you can also clean your display because this is a fingerprint magnet uh, I see that you have not removed your uh, your screen protector but once you remove that you can do that uh, and then um, you can do uh, a few things with the uh, with the screens too so the scroll wheel function you can long press on the left scroll wheel for a quick access menu if you long press that so you press the button in and it will bring you that and that because that is what it set to the steering wheel heating now if you want to have defrost or if you want the camera you can do that so let's hit on camera and press the long, long press there if you press and hold it will bring up your camera now or if you if you have the glove box there it's opening the glove box when you press the long press there so you don't don't have to uh, the screen and you don't have it. to do the touch screen and control it you can have something okay. else so if this is something that you use often you can use that there so you can have a whole host of things so you can have temperature you have you can have none you can have temperature fan speed display brightness can be done there save dash cam footage with just the press acceleration mode can be changed with uh, with the press there so let's hit on the acceleration mode or you can do uh, uh, the steering wheel heating defrost camera dome lights glove box these are the things that are there or you can ask each time too so every time you press it it will it'll ask you to it will it can choose now there you can go and choose what you want there and you can use that too so it'll ask you each time what you want to do there okay, so let me save the dash cam now okay so if you want to save in dash cam you don't want it each time so dash, dash cam you save it there you leave it now if you press long press there to save the footage so that's about the uh, display if these are trip meters you can see what are the what are your trips there you can create a trip you can reset a trip there's always a current trip the last charge uh, trip and then you can have a trip a trip b you can change that to uh, something else as well and, and name that too and you can reset those trip a and trip b so you can have two trips at the time and that's the automatic it shows like exactly how many kilometers you have yes so this, these are the number of number of kilometers you have driven so the brand new car 927 kilometers now let's go into navigation now we can have the navigation volume up when it gives you vocal uh, you know navigation guidance. Uh, guidance or you can turn that off by hitting that and and, clean, and, and doing that it'll actually save to your profile too you can have automatic navigation so it will route to home work or the next calendar event so depending on where your calendar event is it will take you home or take you to that calendar event and it will actually do that if you sync your calendar to the this one you can have a trip planner you can add superchargers uh, stops if necessary or online routing as well so you can it will route based on your traffic uh, and you can avoid ferries avoid tolls you can do all that there i forgot to show you one thing here so let's say you want to go to uh, let's say you want to go to the supercharger uh, right there and it's it's now navigating to supercharger you can add one more thing here you can actually click on this and add another stop in between you can say I want to go uh, a primby before I go to the supercharger so it'll, it'll actually give you uh, a way to do that so now you see it's, it's saying preconditioning battery for fast charging uh, before because it's going so to a supercharger really, okay so that is about navigation and this is very important this is safety now we have uh, we can turn off sentry uh, or turn on sentry mode so now we're going to turn on sentry mode when sentry mode is active this particular icon will come up so this shows that your sentry mode is active in your car but you can exclude a few places so at home you don't want sentry mode to work because you're going to park inside a garage you can turn off sentry mode there you can exclude at work or you can also exclude at all the places you have saved in your favorite section so you can go and exclude in those places so if you don't want that you can take that off and it'll do camera based detection and there's live view in your in your phone that's what we said and you can uh, you can set your dash cam to auto so it'll automatically save or you can save on honk as well you can delete uh, dash cam clips you can format the usb drive and like i said instead of just having the usb drive in the uh, glove box you can also have a hard disk a one terabyte hard disk you can put inside and you can format it and use it and there's a very important safety feature here this is important to know you may ask Nash what will happen if, if I'm in an accident somebody can just open my glove box and then steal that dash cam footage that USB stick or the hard disk what will I do you can actually do something called glove box pin you can have a four digit pin and you can save that too so let's say you want to put it as 420 uh, 4200 <laughs> you can put that 
and you can change that to afterwards you can change that uh, uh, you can in enter that uh, pin so 4200 and that will open that will be disabled there and you can now enable it and then set a, a new pin there too this is a very important feature this is that's additional safety feature especially when you have some confidential documents or something like that in your glove box yeah you can you can have a pin this is another important feature this is pin to drive now this is a, a two-factor authentication so your the phone is actually set as your your uh, key, uh, for key, the car. key for yep. the car. So what happens if somebody stole your phone? They can just get into your car and drive. And that is why this is a two-factor authentication or two-factor feature, second level of security. You can now set a PIN code for yourself. And every time you get into the car and press on the, um, press on the uh, 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 brake pedal, it will bring up the screen and only when you put your pin can your car be driven That's at good all. to know. So even like somebody stole your phone, they can't really drive your car at all. If they did not know your pin. So yep. they must know yep. your phone number, uh, sorry, your pin number and have access to your phone for them to drive your car. So this is something I let you set up afterwards. Yep. Now the speed limit mode, you can set it 110 and that for that as well, you have to put a pin and you have to put that pin to set that too. Now, cabin heat uh, protection. So, if the cabin becomes really hot, if you're sitting in a, in a hot weather, the car is parked in a hot weather, you can have this on. So, it will keep your car's cabin inside in, in, a, in, a, in a reasonably uh, fair temperature. And this will work till your battery goes down to 20%. So, you can now set this as well and uh, set it to uh, uh, what temperature you want the car to be at. And at 20%, this will not work. So... You can do that. This gear chimes. So every time you turn on the gear selector, so drive, it leave you that chime. If you're going to park, if you're going to, yeah. So if you're going to park, it'll give you another gear chime. So that's the gear chime. So it'll give you for gear selection and for chiming. When you talk about the park, what about the handbrake? Okay, this is a great question. So you want to know about the parking brake, isn't it? Yeah. So you, you park the car by pressing on that button. Yeah, then that's the park button and you go down to drive, you press that, it parks. Now, if you press and hold that button, you can see that the yep. parking brake indicator is now turned on. So that is for your hard parking. So many people do not know this. So this is for your hard parking. You can now activate the gear selector to go into drive. So that parking brake goes off and only the hold button is there. Now, just press on the parking brake once. So now the car is just parked. But if you keep and press and hold it so it, it shows you there's a hard park so this is the handbrake that that is there in the manual cars, in other cars so yeah. many people do not know this by pressing and holding that button you can have uh, that activated too okay to use the wipers this is the button to use there is a there's a button there so you press that you need to press the button here yeah press it in and that will activate the wiper now people may want to do the water spray as well as you see we did try to activate it press and hold that and that will spray the water and then you can use that to clean the front uh, windshield. So that's pretty cool. Now let's go into service menu. So this is an important menu. So in this menu, you can see what is the uh, air pressure for your tires. Okay. And then you can put uh, uh, the and car to wash more. What's the maximum mode. tire pressure for the Tesla Model Y? That is in your driver's side on the uh, door sill. You can find out what is the summer and winter temp uh, pressure you can set there. You can uh, put the car into washing mode. So you can enter into a car wash mode where it will close all the windows. It will lock all the charge ports. It will disable the windshield wipers and the sentry mode. It will also uh, have walk away door locks and parking chimes will be all disabled. And this is for going into a conveyor in a, uh, in a car wash. In our case, I do not use that. I only use manual wash. So that is something that is there. You can adjust the height of these headlights from here. You can also use the same scroll wheels to do that and it, and it will automatically calibrate and, and it will set that too. That's the left light and the right light you can change it separately. Don't try to change it. We can leave it that, at this time because it is calibrated and set. You can uh, do, uh, uh, so yours is a 19 inches uh, tires but if you want to change it to something else, let's say you get a 20 inch induction wheels, you, you click that once you change the tires and you click on update, it will actually change the, um, it will actually change that there as well. If you want to change it back, you have to reboot the car. That is something that is there. So if you want to go back to the 19-inch Gemini wheels, you, you update that and it will change the animation too. So that just right. so that it looks okay. it looks cool there. 
you can do a camera preview from here so you can do other things like uh, uh, driver steering wheel mirror calibration you can clear the browser history you can go into factory reset if you're selling your car you can you can do into white wiper service mode and you click on wiper service mode it'll bring up the uh, wipers up so that you can change the wiper blades uh, if you want to do that so it'll bring up the wipers up as well so click that it'll go back to the normal one now this is an important important let's tab. go back to the service one yeah so do we need to take this car for a service like every six months or so great question so this car does not need any servicing or it barely needs servicing is the right word to use so you don't have to go for any scheduled uh, servicing with Tesla it does not happen that way the few things that you probably have to do is to put the uh, windshield wiper fluid uh, either you put water or you buy a windshield wiper fluid from outside and you can put it in there I'll show you how to put the windshield wiper fluid in just a bit and those are the few things and then uh, there's no uh, actual um, uh, servicing or scheduled servicing like oil change or filter change nothing of that sort if your cabin filter gets really dirty it'll actually give you a message saying that the cabin filter needs changing you can either change it by yourself and there is a uh, there, is a, there are uh, tutorials out there or you can go take it to Tesla and they will change the cabin filter for you uh, uh, and that is the only, only few things there is no actual That's uh, servicing know. at all so it's In, not like other cars like every 5,000 kilometers 10,000 kilometers you have to go for a service not at all not at all uh, it is recommended that in once in two years you go take it back to Tesla and just check if the electronics are all working fine. If it is not working fine, it will actually show here if you go into controls, there's, there are notifications here. And this will give you all the notifications that the car has had, all the alerts that the car has had. No active alerts, it says. So all these are just uh, some uh, smaller alerts that comes up. So if there is a major problem with the car, it will actually be in active alerts which have not been addressed. So that is a notification button. So there is no actual uh, servicing for the car per se there's no uh, scheduled uh, servicing for the car that's good so you can save some money for that as well no loads of money that, that is why it is much cheaper to to buy an old own a, uh, a a tesla or an ev for that matter and you'll be you'll be actually uh, happy to know that the model y for q1 of this year is the highest selling car in the entire world among all categories of cars so the model y is super cheap to own and it's super uh, popular as well now let's go into software here you'll know what your car is the win number of your car is there and, and i will block your win number and then it will show you the capabilities your car has uh, so you can actually set the name of your car you can go and click on that and you set the name into happy breeze yep. it'll give you what your your kilometers that you have driven it will tell you if you have full self-driving capability which you have you have premium connectivity which expires on the 19th of june 2023 so every month you pay nine dollar 99 to to activate that and what do i get from the premium connectivity so with premium connectivity you get a few things so you'll get the live traffic visualization you'll get video and music streaming you'll get the car okay you'll get the internet for the browser over wi-fi and cellular and some other features like karaoke are not supported in some cars, but in our case, it does. So if you want to have this live traffic visualization with satellite view for the maps and also streaming audio and video when you're parking or when you're driving, you need to have the premium connectivity uh, enabled. Otherwise, you can use your car's Wi-Fi as a hotspot. That's my next question. Can I use my mobile phone Wi-Fi to have the hotspot? You can use your hotspot to stream music, but you won't have the traffic visualization. Right. That is something that is important to know and uh, you can get a software update and in your case you just had a software update which was released for your car and you, you, can, you can have the navigation data which has been uh, set up. So we actually did this this morning at 6.58 a.m. On, on the 28th of May. And if you have any upgrades for your car that will come up in the upgrade section over here. In your case your premium connectivity will expire uh, on the 23rd of next month and your, your card will be charged at $9.99 including of tax and you can actually now subscribe by just swiping across and you can subscribe to this right now you're not you can actually subscribe to that let's do it now because I'm going to use the stream connectivity let's do this awesome on camera that's it your purchase is successful it's as simple as that your car will upgrade after the reboot when parked so when you're parked and uh, when you turn off the car and the car back, turns back on this will be set up so, so what all you get I can have the premium connectivity every month from here onwards yes it'll get it'll get automatically charged onto the car that you set up in your set in your tesla account you'll get navigation you'll get live traffic visualization 
satellite view maps, video streaming, karaoke, music streaming, internet browsing, all that is there. But you must understand that internet browsing and a few other things will only be working when the car is parked. You cannot have the right, internet for browser reasons. for safety reasons. And the $9.99 is for monthly fee or for the year? Monthly. So it's $9.99 per month including tax. Okay. Does that mean the car is connected with the satellite internet connection or does it have any inbuilt SIM card in it? Great question too. So the car has inbuilt SIM card. So it has an LTE connection there, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, in our case in Australia, it's a Telstra SIM card that is there in our card. It, you cannot use it to to create a Wi-Fi hotspot inside your car, but the car will use that when whenever you get the signal. And in this case, you can see there are three bars that are there and LTE connection is on. So this is a LTE 4G connection. We don't have 5G yet, All right. but okay. it will come so to 5G afterwards. In this afterwards. case, if I drive my car to the remote location where I don't have an internet connection or where is, there is no Telstra network coverage, how am I going to use my navigation? Your nav normal navigation will work, but the, the traffic visualization will not happen. Your, uh, you, you won't have the, all the na navigation there. You can't store the map on the screen. That is a small problem with the cars uh, when there is uh, uh, when you go to a remote location without uh, 4G coverage. But, uh, but uh, in our case, Australia has a fair amount of coverage. Hi there guys, is this your first time charging your Tesla Model Y or a Model 3 at a supercharger? This is a 250 kilowatt supercharger here in Fig Tree and this is how it looks like. This is a single cable thin wires and it has a CCS2 port in it and this is how you start charging your car. So how do you open the charge port? There is a button on top of this plug here. You press on this and that will open the charge port or you can also do this. Just double tap and that will open your charge port and all you have to do is plug this in like so. The light turns to dark blue there first and then it will turn green and now it is charging. It is as simple as that. And there we go, here we are charging. 200 kilometers, 64 kilowatts, 412 kilometers per hour, and we've just added nine kilometers. It is as simple as that to start charging. Now, how do you stop charging? You can do one of two things. You can click on the stop charging button here, and that will stop the charging. That's it, and you're ready to go. Unlock the charge port from here or from the plug as well. So what do you think, Amjad? Uh, you know, the whole entire session was really useful. Pretty much, I think you answered all of my questions. And thank you so much for your time and uh, effort. Absolute pleasure. And as we know that we've answered uh, almost everything that ChatGPT asked. So what do you think of the ChatGPT questions? Because that is a part of this video too. Oh, I like ChatGPT, no doubt. Okay. And you, you thought it, it gave you a good comprehensive? Exactly. Especially for a, a person, someone like me, who bought a car like just for a couple of weeks before. Yeah. It is really useful to have a beginner's guide. That's great. And we think, I think so too, that uh, ChatGPT has answered uh, all the questions that uh, a beginner guy, a beginner may want to have uh, answered with regards to a Model Y and a Model 3. Uh, and uh, I'm quite a fan of ChatGPT myself. Is there anything else that you would have asked? Not really at the moment, but I may have questions uh, maybe after a couple of weeks again. Fair enough. So if we have more questions, we'll revisit that and make another video. Sure. Of that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, now, thank you very much for giving me your time and uh, thank you for letting thank us you. film in your car. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in another interesting video. If you like what I'm doing, uh, click on that subscribe button and also smash on that uh, bell icon will be great. Uh, also, if you are looking to buy a Tesla of your own, a 3 or a Y right now in Australia, kindly uh, try and use my referral code. You can click on this uh, link in the description to get that uh, referral code or you can also scan this QR code as well and get my referral code. Both of us will get credits and we can use it against supercharger credits or other merchandise inside of Tesla. I'll see you guys in another interesting video. Until then, this is Nash from Tesla and the Gong signing off. Peace.